Christendom and Western civilization are entering their final warfare before Armageddon. In these deliverance studies of principalities and powers, we will be exposing the occult, revealing knowledge of the doctrines, words, rites, eulogies, phrases, and definitions that demon worshipers use. The only intelligent way to interpret our times is to present a biblical interpretation. Jesus prophesied that his church shall prevail. In Matthew 16, verse 18, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Today, the church must rise up to the greatest action of its entire history. May I bless you, please. Lord, these that study thy word, let thy spirit anoint them. Let the precious power of the Holy Ghost come to them. Let them be doubly blessed. Give them thy holy strength to move into the world of the unseen and sometimes the unknown, to walk in that world in faith and in courage and help them to set multitudes free. I believe you to bless everyone that studies this word that they indeed shall be a conqueror in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We live in a world today that uh, a lot is said about exorcism. Television, radio, books. We have some that are trying to practice exorcism that have no capabilities of doing it at all for the simple reason that Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself could not stand. And, and seeing that they belong to the same kingdom, they can't do anything like exorcism. We're talking about God's people casting out the devil's people. And, and so we're talking about holiness casting out unholiness. And so uh, it, we're dealing in two separate worlds. And the, and the Great Commission in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16 and verse 17, under our, our general study in principalities and powers called, What is Exorcism? The Lord Jesus said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And they shall also speak with new tongues. We wish to involve ourselves in this study in what we would determine to be an in-depth study on a most important subject, and that is exorcism. Uh, uh, to begin with, you're not a peculiar person if you're involved in, in exorcism. And uh, because we believe that every Christian in the world has a right and a power to be involved in exorcism of setting people free from the devil's power. Our first thought in it is, where should uh, demons be cast out? I, I have known uh, many times uh, people saying, I'd like to have a private uh, a session of exorcism. And in studying the Word of God, I have, dis I, I, I have seen that uh, not of necessity do we need a, a private session. Uh, now, some are pray, afraid of the public uh, exorcism because a person might, uh, like in Jesus' day, be thrown on the ground, be knocked on the ground, uh, scream out, and, and they would be, uh, you know, ashamed to have that happen uh, where they were. Now, in the, in the New Testament with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, spirits were cast out in church, in church meetings, also on street corners, and also in open-air services, but almost always, there were a number of people around, including believers and unbelievers, who saw it and always said, and they wondered. <laughs> they were simply amazed uh, that Jesus had done it. At least you and I must never attempt to hide or conceal what God is doing. We must never in any way let any shame come to us for what God is doing. For what God is doing is so great, so wonderful, and such a tender mercy we should always put it out in front and say, this is what Jesus has done, and we're not ashamed of it. Uh, if, if demons are to be cast out in public, who can cast them out? Now, the Lord Jesus said in the verse that I just read to you, they that believe, them that believe, shall cast out spirits. Now, if he made it so open like that, then I think you have a right to accept it like that. Now, all the disciples were there and could believe. There were 12 special ones. There were 70 added later. And that's 82 people right there. 
There were other special people that went along with him. And, and so uh, he was telling us that all people that had faith, uh, they could do this. We look a little further, and besides these, we know that Paul exercised spirits by his mighty power. And so any believer, spiritual believer, uh, living believer, they, they should become involved in helping those who need release from satanic forces through prayer. The only hope in today's world against the awful tide of the supernatural demon manifestation, now this is a great thing here, is for the total church to rise up and set men free. One or two men will never do it as sure as I'm standing before you. And if I thought a few men could do it, I'd spend all my time in Bible schools just telling a few Bible school students to do it. But until we get the whole body of Christ doing it, we're never going to set this world free. A person must have a right relationship with God, as we've said a number of times, if he's going to come against the forces of evil. Uh, if any man is going to be an American soldier, he's going to wear an American uniform. You see? And, and, and if you're going to come against the, the powers of Satan, you're going to wear a Christian uniform. You're going to be clothed with the power of God and of what he gives you to, to wear at that time. You see, then, if, uh, if I am supposed to cast them out, our third question is, how can I cast them out? Number one, by the Word of God. The Bible says it is a sword of the Spirit. And so you take the Word of God and you use the Word of God to speak against it. For example, in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says, I say unto you that whosoever shall say, put a little circle around the word say, Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thy cast in the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe, put one little circle around, believe, that those things which he saith, there's your third circle, saith, it shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, to confess with our lips, you will correct that line. It says without in your book there, would you, that's a typographical area. Era, would you, those first four words are to confess with our lips, not out, but to confess with our lips is very important to the word believe. Now, in, in this scripture, believe is used one time. But in this scripture, the word say or saith is used three times. Jesus said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So that means say it, you know. Say it in Jesus' name. Now, when we wish to exercise spirits, we always do it by the blood of Jesus. I have a little chorus that I sing, Oh, the blood of Jesus. I have never had a great deliverance without singing that chorus spontaneously, never thinking about it. It just pours out. And I've had dozens of people that were present to join in that little chorus, Oh, the blood of Jesus. The most forceful element on the face of this earth is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because blood is life and we're speaking of the life of Jesus, the life of Jesus. And so we, we use the blood. And then we, 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 we say, uh, we come by the authority of the Great Commission. Now, a, a policeman uh, comes to you and, and he comes by an authority. The, the, either the city or the county or the state has told him, says, if you find a person speeding, you have a right to stop him and give him a little ticket and tell him he has to bring it back in here to see me. And, and says so you have a right to do that. And if he doesn't think you have a right, uh, then you also have a gun. And you can enforce your right, you see. Because he has been told whatsoever he says, <laughs> when he says stop, you don't keep going. The only ticket I've ever gotten in this city is when I came to a place that said S-T-O-P and I slowed down and in about three minutes, a cop was on my tail and I stopped and I said, Officer, uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> he said, nothing. He said, did you see that sign down there that said stop? I said, yes, sir. He says, well, why didn't you stop? He said, uh, I said, I slowed down. And he kept on writing. He says, I'm going to teach you that S-T-O-P don't mean slow down. And he did. He gave me a good lesson in reading. 
God wants us to, to have a law behind us. You know, that, that's strength. So when you come against a Satan, you said, the, the, the one that created life, the one who made all things, the one that saved my soul, gave me the great commission that I have the authority to cast you out, get gone. That's the strongest thing you've got. And backing that authority up is your strength, is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And backing that up is the glorious Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Hey, you can't fail. You can't fail. You say, what kind of spirits uh, could, we, could we deal with in exorcism? As we have been studying in these lessons, uh, there are spirits that are related to people being blind. I have told you before, and I ought to tell you again, as far as we know, there is no spirit. There, there, there is no spirit that has more than one ability, as far as, as far as we know. That's the reason there are multiple spirits in people. Uh, because one spirit opens the door, he lets the others in. D did you know a man can start doing a certain thing wrong and he won't know why he starts doing other things wrong? And the spirit that he let within him brought in another spirit and he starts doing things wrong and wonders why he's doing it. I I've had men to say to me, why do I lie all the time? And I said, very likely because you've permitted the spirit of adultery to come into you. And adulterer says, I need a pal in here. And they brought him along. Are you still here? Yeah. All right. Uh, so these spirits are, are named like this because usually they only have one function. Those that, are, that ca cause blindness. And uh, we, we have seen eyes open by the mighty power of God. A, a deafness. And, and the Bible says there are deceiving spirits. All they do is confuse you and mess you up until you can't see straight and can't think straight. There are seducing spirits that, that, will, that, will, that will make you and cause you and, and woo you to do things that are wrong and say, come, it's all right, it's not so bad, come on. And they are what the Bible calls seducing spirits. There are jealous spirits. A, a jealousy is a spirit. And, and if you permit yourself to be overwhelmed with jealousy, you will be abnormal. You cannot be normal spiritually before God if that thing controls you. There are insane spirits, as we have seen. There are epileptic spirits. There are familiar spirits. And, and there are many others. That's just a small grouping of them. Demons are a class of fallen spirits, spirit beings, which, uh, which the, the Bible takes, talks about frequently and wants you to take notice of them. And they are variously called different things, you know. Uh, they, they're called devils or demons or evil spirits. And it don't matter what they are, you can set people free from them. Now, these spirits uh, seek human habitation. Uh, they will live in animals, and they will even live in trees and things like that. Uh, but uh, they, they seek human habitation for the simple reason that they, they, they want a manifestation. They desire a manifestation. All evidence points to the fact that they are disem disembodied spirits or spirits without corporality, without a body. Their desire is for embodiment. They will possess a man or a beast. Their activities are in harmony with the objectives of Satan. Always, 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 always. And that is to defile and to destroy and to hurt the plan of Almighty God. You are nothing. As the witch doctor in, in South America uh, 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 told me that all that he was to the spirits, they called him their apparatus. They said, you are my apparatus. He was just something that they used. Just something that they used was all he was. And, and, and when, you, when you permit the devil to control you, you're just the devil's apparatus. He couldn't care less about you. He's wanting to hurt God through you. And that's all that he wants to do. Uh, we find some spirits are imprisoned. Uh, in, in, and especially, the Bible says, in the waters of the Euphrates. And in and, and Revelation 9, 14, it says, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound they're also bound. They're not in hell because it's not time for them to go there. They're bound in the great river Euphrates. I am just sure of one thing. They won't be the only ones bound. And they can be bound in be some in St. Joseph River. Uh, spirits that, uh, that didn't do what they were supposed to do. And, and they were bound and, and, and placed there. And one day they will all be, all be loosed. Uh, demons have no right to dwell in any person, any human being, who, and especially those that profess the name of Jesus. And if the person is disobedient and self-willed and intent upon his own course and permits his life to continue empty, empty of the things of God, a spirit has a right to return and take possession of such a person. And that's in Luke 11, 24, and 26. We've already studied it, that when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest, finding none. I will return to whence I came. He cometh and findeth it swept and garnished. 
he goeth and taketh unto him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Now in exorcism, uh, what must a person actually know inside of himself if you want to set somebody free? And number one, you must realize and know that that person is acting like the devil, that demons act like Satan, and that person will cause them to act just like their master, and that demons vary in strength. I mean, the, the, the extent of strength is simply amazing uh, that, that they have. Uh, demons have pride-filled natures. That's the reason they got thrown out of heaven. They want to exalt themselves above, above the throne of God, and, and so they are all filled with pride. Pride-filled natures. Many demons can live in one person at the same time. They don't take up any room because they're spirits. And demons are always unclean. They are never clean. They are never clean. They're always unclean. Demons are not to be feared when you're in Christ. Never. Now, there are religious demons in the world. There, there are spirits that are, that are religious and apparently have special talents for luring people into false religions, occult religions. A man doesn't just drift into the cup. The devil drives him into it. The, 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 the Bible teaches us in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and to doctrines of devils. And, and so they are bewitched into it by the devil deceiving them. So demons give false revelations. You better believe it. They, they give uh, teachings that are unscriptural, doctrines that are, that are not right, and, and they are possessed with an undue personal ambition. And they'll give that to people, wanting to rise up above others, be above others, be, be big. And you have to watch that type of thing, and you can identify it. The Bible teaches clearly that this will happen, especially in the last days. Because of, I just quoted to you, it says, He speaketh expressly that in the latter times is when it will take place. Now, if one says, why do you involve yourself in exorcism? The first thing you answer is that you're following Jesus that Jesus spent a large portion of his life setting people free from the spirit world. Now, now this is the thing that got me so bad, that none of, the de none of the denominations in the world set themselves to set people free uh, from spiritual hurt. <laughs> none of them would. And, and actually, they said, we don't want to talk about the subject. Well, that pleases Satan. If you won't talk about it, he has full reign to do whatever he pleases. He just runs wild if you don't talk about it. And so you must... Realize that, that, that you can set people free and that God wants you to set them free. Now, these spirits that you will deal with, some are very weak and some are stronger. Many demons, I can live in one person and they're unclean spirits. They are religious spirits. And uh, Jesus found them in church himself. And, and, uh, and so we do know that they, that they are uh, spirits that, uh, that possess people that are of a religious nature that has to do with many kinds of faults religions and, and all, all kinds of cults and spiritism and, and so forth. Now, Jesus was the greatest of the exorcists. In Luke 7, 21, in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and their plagues, and he cured many of evil spirits. Many, not a few, but many of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, uh, he gave their sight. I like that word many there. In Luke 8 and 26, it says, And they arrived in the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And, and here is the story of the person that we had in, a, in, another, in another lesson, where the Lord uh, removed the spirits from this man, and the man said that there were about 2,000 spirits in him. And those entered into 2,000 different uh, pigs or swine, and they ran into the sea, and they were, and they were destroyed. Now, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, uh, the Lord Jesus spoke to his 12 disciples, and says, now I give all of you authority over all. I'd put a circle there. And, and I, 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 you know, I like to believe the whole thing. He said, I give you power and authority over all demons. Now, brother, that was all of them. That meant there wasn't a single evil spirit on the face of the earth that could stand before these men. That he gave them authority over all of these spirits. And, and Luke chapter 9 and verse 37, it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, the people met him. And I told you the story already of that boy, that the Spirit taketh him, and, and how the Lord Jesus cast that Spirit out of him. And the Lord Jesus called it an evil spirit. I mean, an unclean spirit. And he healed the child, and he delivered him again unto his father. And so we are following, not a denomination, 
We're following not a people. We're not following a doctrine. We're following specifically the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now uh, <laughs> if you go out casting spirits out of people, you may get a little persecution. And that might be just enough to send some of us home. Say, well, I can't stand it. I'll go home. Well, that's been done before. That won't be the first time people went home. But if you go out against the kingdom of the devil, I've had people say, you know, until I got received the Holy Spirit and I really began to, to, to pray for people and bless people, I didn't have any troubles. But man, do I have them now. Well, I said, well, what do you think? Beforehand, you didn't bother the devil at all, and now you're tormenting him. What do you expect him to do? Sit down and fiddle his thumbs? Well, you, you got him wrong. He's going to fight you back. Now, all you do is fight him back. Then you've got a bigger victory. Amen. It's good not to only win over the diseases and, and, and the needs. It's good to win over him, too. We have power over him also. The Bible says, resist him, and he has to flee. Amen. Glory be to God. So we are not in any way intimidated by him. We are not in any way in a position where we have any fear of him or his evil spirits or the conditions in people. When we pray for that girl in the Philippines, uh, and you know, when a person's in a, in a maximum security prison, you don't just walk in. And, and so we went to the mayor first of that great city of Manila, asked him if we could pray for that girl. And he passed the buck. I, I, he finally, he said, now two people have died. The doctor laughed at her, and he died in 24 hours. And the head jailer kicked her, and, and he died in four days. And neither one got sick, they just died. And he says, you'd be the third one to die, and that'd be an international problem. And I, I said, Mayor, I'm not going to die. And I said, the Lord didn't send me there to die. The Lord sent me there to set the girl free. Amen. And I said it so positively, he believed it. But he still passed the buck. He said, go and see the chief doctor. There's six doctors taking care of that prison and see the head doctor. And I went over there, and he was an unbeliever. He, he didn't even, he said he had had 8,000 autopsies in that room and hadn't found a spirit yet. I didn't answer him at all. I just said, you found Clarita, and you're scared of her. Yeah, 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 yeah. He thought he might be the next one to die. Two had already died that were very close friends of his. And so when we went before that thing, we just commanded it to come out. And it had to obey. You know, it had, to, it had nothing else to do except to come out. It, it took six men to hold her at one time. And all of them got beaten and scarred and all messed up. And when I touched her, she couldn't do a thing. She couldn't fight. She couldn't slap. She couldn't kick. She couldn't do a thing except scream and cry. And I said, shut that up. I don't want to hear that either. I only want you to come out of there. And the thing came out of her and she was set free. God, God commands you and me, number one, to have compassion. Compassion upon that those that Satan has hurt. We're just not out looking for trouble. We're just not out seeking to find difficult cases. You might not be able to handle them. I fasted for every major case we've ever had. We fasted and prayed, uh, preparing ourselves for it. We don't just walk in on it. And the Lord doesn't let those things happen to you. The Lord protects you in that way that if you're coming up against one, the Lord prepares you for it. But God doesn't want you nor me, either one, nor the whole body of Christ to back off from any situation on the face of this earth. He wants us to walk into it in mighty victory. Glory be to God. And I believe it and I accept it in, in Jesus' name. Now in Luke uh, chapter 11 and verse 14, it says, and he was casting out a spirit or a devil, and, the, and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was going out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. You, you'll, you will forever have, the people will never understand it. They're going to try to give you the glory for it and to tell how great you are. And if you receive it, you'll lose the anointed, and you may die like Herod because you took the glory unto yourself and didn't give it to God. It isn't that we have power. It's that we have the power of Jesus and we use his power. And Luke 11, 24, it says that when the unclean spirit is going out, he walketh in dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. And, and, and uh, you say, well, can I send them to hell? No, you cannot send them to hell. Uh, you can send them into dry places. Gee, always use the Bible. You can send them into dry places. You can send them to uninhabited places. But you cannot send them to hell because their time, they're going, but their time is not yet. When Satan is put in hell, all the spirits that are with him, they will be placed there also. And they will be with him forever and ever because they followed him in rebellion when they rebelled against God. 
One of the most beautiful verses in the Bible is your Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, uh, which says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That's the ministry that God wants you, me, the total body of Christ, the total church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants every one of us to perform. That we will go about wherever the Lord leads us. And that we shall set people free from the power of the devil. Wherever I travel overseas, wherever I go, I immediately tell people that Jesus can cast out evil spirits. <laughs> you see, you just go start a fight, don't you? Well, I guess you could call it that. But until you let the devil know that you're in charge, he seems to want to take charge. But immediately you call his hand and say, say, I'm here now. You better know it. And I'm here in victory and strength and power and dominion under Jesus. And you better know it. And then you do have that victory and that power. Wouldn't it be great if the whole body of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ could set millions free? Amen. Yeah, it would, it would certainly be great. It would certainly be wonderful. We're, we're believing that we're right upon the time when at least hundreds of thousands of people are going to set others free. At least hundreds of thousands. There might even be millions of people. But at least hundreds of thousands of people are going to set others free by the mighty power of God. And the purpose in these lessons is to get us all ready for the greatest hour the church has ever known. And if you use these lessons just as a beginner, and you dig deeper there into the Word of God, I want to tell you something. You'll be able to set people free. Every one of you will be able to set people free. And we're going to believe God that that's the ministry that God will give you. Here at Lassie Broadcast.